Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my first vlog. In this vlog, I'm just going to be talking about what I'm going to be doing over this weekend. So this weekend, I'm going to be going up north to visit family members, and I'm also going to be watching a football game between Wolves and QPR. I'm not going to be doing any like live reactions during the game or anything, because I'm just going to sit down and enjoy the match. I might film like bits of like the stadium, walking up to it, the players coming out the tunnel, etc, but nothing like during the game. So just for the record, I support Wolves, and as previously stated, we're playing QPR this weekend. I'm expecting us to win due to the fact that we've, uh, I think we've won two of our last three, and I think QPR have lost five or six on the bounce, so if we don't win, that's just going to be terrible. So yeah, that's all for today. Until the next time I vlog, goodbye. So guys, uh, carrying on from the previous part of the vlog, today is match day, which is Saturday, and hopefully the game's going to be a really good one, and I'm looking forward to it, and I will film more once I get to the ground. Serious. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the final part of the vlog where I basically just review the highlights of the match and just talk about what I thought of the match overall. So, the first highlight I want to address is the first goal that we conceded with literally QPR's first attack. So the ball breaks loose after we fail our attack and they're on the counter attack. No one's getting back. Our full back is in there for some reason. Jack Price is the one picking it up and um, Danny Bart, the captain, really physical, or looks physical, just didn't put anything in there. He literally just let him just walk in front of him and plot it like in the bottom corner like me. You're the captain, you're meant to be our leading role figure in the back line as well as the rest of the team, and you do that. Like me, come on, you're like 10 grand a week and you can't just pull him down or, no, actually don't pull him down because I'll give away a penalty, but you know what I mean, just... You've got physicality, use it. Shoulder barge him or something. Just don't let him like make you look like a mug. Right, so the second title I want to talk about is Wolves' first goal. And um starts off with Connor Cody pinging an absolutely peach of a ball over to Helder Costa, who's in acres of space for some reason. Like We did that throughout the game. We kept pinging it over to him, and QPR just couldn't pick him up. I don't understand why we couldn't have just scored more goals. Because the amount of times that Helder Costa got the ball, he'd run up the line, and as you will see in this goal, he curled it, ooh, he got it in with his stronger foot. Literally run down the line, crossed it in with his right foot into the box. Dicko doesn't get a touch on it, but Dave Edwards does. Dave Edwards gets the goal. Further on in the match, because we score, we think... You know what, rather than replicating how we just scored, why don't we run the line to the position which we scored from the last time, but rather than cutting the ball into the box, or crossing it into the box with the foot that you did for the first goal, let's turn back and cross it in with your weaker foot, trying to do an in-swinger when the defence comes back and everyone's left on offside, or pass it back to Connor Cody, worse off, and then he crosses it in for everybody who's yet again offside, because when we pass the ball back, the defence automatically pushes up and leaves our attack offside. Like, why did we not just replicate the goal that we scored in the first place? Like, come on, he, we had so many opportunities to do that, but due to the fact that the team just thought this was going to be a walkover, they're like, ah, we can try anything, it'll work. It didn't. Right. So, good ball by Connor Cody. Over to Elder Costa, who's in eight of his base. For some reason, he slows down, but then he takes off, crosses it in, Dicko misses, Edwards finishes it. He goes mental, the crowd goes mental. The team literally do like this massive huddle thing, saying, yes, we're back into this. 
However, they didn't, they didn't keep stepping on the pedal. They literally overtook for a split second in the race, but then thought, yeah, let's just ease off the gas. We want to save our petrol, like, you know, because we'd rather keep our petrol than, you know, win the race, because that makes a lot of sense. It just doesn't, does it? Let's be honest. So the third highlight I want to talk about is uh, an attack from Wolves where basically Matt Doherty picks up the ball around the halfway line, drives forward with it, plays it into a Bokhanhari, who beats the player, nearly gets fouled in the process, but then he's literally, because for some reason the defenders are miles apart, he's got a shot on goal. He chooses to do some weird technique where he tries to finesse it, but it ends up being a backwards. It's 1-1, one, one. we're pushing to score again, to absolutely take the wind out of QPR sails, and you do that, like... So the final uh, highlight I want to address is QPR's final goal against us. And before I actually play the clip, I just want to warn you for what you're about to see, is like, the worst piece of defending you're probably going to witness. Like, I'm being genuine, but the lack of clarity, understanding, communication, just the overall performance of the defence in this clip is just shockingly bad, genuinely. Like, alright, let's play the clip. <clears throat> so, QPR, as I said, are on the attack. Jack Price, he's like 5 for 7, not physical, loses the ball. We block it, but then... But then Doherty and Stearman both go for the ball trying to shield off the striker for some reason. Like they shield him off, neither of them claim the ball, kick it out for a corner into the stand, clear it out to the other stand on their potentially weaker or stronger foot for a throw in. They both just shield off the player who ends up like breaking through. Stearman tries like some weird back heel into the player which obviously ricochets off of the attacking player, plays it forward to another player. Well actually, is it the same player? Yeah, it's the same player. The same player breaks through after a ricochet off him from Stearman's weird back heely technique thingy. But right. I don't understand why you would do that in the first place, because if you actually pull that off and it gets beyond him, you're the only person that's actually going to realise that's happened. So, once that ball gets played in behind you, as well as Matt Doherty and the striker, the ball's just going to be sat rolling slowly in the box. You don't want that. You want it to be out of play so you can get men behind the ball willing to defend it. Not, oh shit, what's, what's happened? Oh fuck, it's been a... Oh, that's basically just sat up the other team again. Oh. So the ball gets played through, as I said, and Danny Bart, the captain, 6 foot 4 defender, really big, really bulky, meant to be physical. He kind of... Like, I've paused it right now as the defender is trying to make a challenge. He's going in forward. He's going in with his head. The attacker, on the other hand, is going in with his feet, prodding the ball beyond Carla Kimi, who's only just started to scramble out to try and claim it. Like, like, how the defender's got to that, and then the goalkeeper's just come out to try and claim it. Oh, well done. It's just shocking. Like, Stearman's on the floor with his head in the ground, knowing that his back heel is just pretty much caused that. Not just, like, the only factor. It's one of the many factors. Well, to begin with, Jack Price, he didn't play to the whistle. He's 5'7 or 5'8. He got brought down due to the fact he's smaller and the other guy was bigger and stronger. It's just how it works. You got shoulder barge, you fall over. He's appealing to the ref going, ref, 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 play to the whistle. If the whistle don't blow, play on. Like, bring him down outside the box or something. It sounds stupid, but come on. We're trying to hang on to 1-1 one, one here. We should have killed the game off ages ago, but yet again, we just didn't. And now we're in this position where we're about to concede. He's trying to appeal to the ref. Then they have a shot. Everyone's like, oh, fuck, where's it gone? Where's it gone? Where's it gone? Lands to their striker. Doherty and Stearman, fair enough. They come together to block him off. Two on one. Should be simple. One of them should communicate, saying, Carl... They have a pass back, or one of them communicates, Carl come, and passes it back to him, because they've got more clarity. Passes back to Carl, Carl comes out, meets halfway, boom, up the pitch. Or, Stearman, as the ball's, like, by his right foot, rolls over to his left, which potentially might be his weaker or stronger, I'm not actually too sure. If it's his weaker foot, calmly really pass out for a corner, or if it's stronger foot, clear it out for a throw-in. He instead does, like, this weird back-heely thing that I've already touched upon, where he tried back-heeling it 
away from the goal, but it wouldn't have done that much because it would have only gone like two yards and then stopped, which would have just been stupid because the ball would have been dead in our box, which we don't want to begin with. We want it out, away of danger, clear up for a corner. We can defend that. Clear up for a throw in. We can defend that. We can't defend a back heel, which would set up the potential of the other team, as well as back heeling it into the striker so it ricochets forward and then leads to, you know, the said goal. So, um... So, an additional thing, at the end of the game, despite the lousy passing, laziness and lethargicness of the dribbles, just running up the line and crossing it hopelessly, or cutting it back and then passing it to be crossed in when everyone's offside, the only thing that Paul Lambert said that was missing from the game was a finishing touch. Which, to be fair, Abokanhara had two clear-cut chances, Dicko missed one, which would have been obviously good quality goals to put us ahead. But there was way much more missing than just finishing. If Paul Lambert, like he said, he couldn't ask more from the players other than the finishing. Is he watching the same game as us? We couldn't string more than three passes together going forward. Like, mate, come on. It's QPR. Yes, the players may have walked into the game expecting just to be a walkover, but you can't do that. You just can't just expect it to be a walkover. You have to apply pressure. You have to play the game and then walk over and then expect it to be a walkover when you're producing the walkover itself. You can't just be like, oh yeah, that game will be a walkover. We can just turn up and play however we want. It doesn't work like that. So, um, yeah, fuck me. This has gone into a bit of a run video about how shit Wolves are in that game, but things are looking better. I'm going to be doing a new video soon talking about how Wolves beat Stoke 2-0 in the Cup and how we held Chef Wednesday to a 0-0 draw in which we should have won, but more on that in the next video. So, uh, yeah. We're fucking shit! We're fucking shit! We're Subscribe if you're new, like if you enjoyed, leave a comment if you will, and I'll see you later.